What if you are told that you contribute heavily to the success of the most powerful company in the world? What if you are told that you are one of the reasons the most powerful company in the world remains powerful? The chances that you own a TV set, an automobile, electronic gadgets, social media accounts, and eat out are high, so you are definitely contributing to this powerful financial institution's might. This company owns everything in the world, from consumer goods to the media, and anything you could think of. This company is technically part of the four horsemen of the global economy. I guess there are lots of questions going through your mind right now, and a few of them are, what is the company about? Who are the founders? Well, stick around as we unravel the mystery behind the most powerful company in the world. Buckle up and get ready to be amazed. But before we get into the details, kindly give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more premium content. Now, let's dive in. A glance into any reputable website on the internet would list Aramco, ExxonMobil, Pfizer, Vanguard, and State Street, amongst others, as the most powerful companies in the world but will never list BlackRock Inc. As one. Why? Because BlackRock Inc. chose to remain anonymous while they have major stakes in other big companies worldwide. How did BlackRock come into existence? BlackRock Inc. is a multinational investment company based in New York City, United States, with over 70 offices in 30 countries. The company's existence dates back to 1988, when it was just a risk asset management and fixed income institutional asset management. According to the Wikipedia page, BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager, with over $10 trillion in assets under control. That's a lot of money for a company founded just 35 years ago. So how did they manage to rake up such an outrageous sum of money? The story of BlackRock will not be complete without mentioning the billionaire Larry Fink, who founded the risk asset management company in 1988 alongside Keith Anderson, Susan Wagner, Ben Golub, Robert S. Carpito, Ralph Schlossstein, Barbara Novick, and Hugh Freighter to cater for their clients' asset management services. Prior to establishing BlackRock, Harry and some of his team had worked at First Boston, where they were pioneers in the mortgage-backed securities market in the United States. Just so you know, Fink and his team lost a whopping $90 million during his time at First Boston, and that loss helped motivate him to develop excellent risk management and fiduciary practices. Fink sought an angel investor who believed in his dreams, and he met Pete Peterson of the Blackstone Group. Pete agreed to invest but in exchange for a 50% stake in the bond business. Due to Fink's business knowledge, the new company soon became profitable, and by 1989, the company recorded a $2.7 billion asset while the percentage owned by Blackstone also fell to 40%. In 1992, the company adopted the name BlackRock and was managing over $17 billion in assets. A few years later, Larry Fink became the chairman and CEO of BlackRock Inc. after a fallout with Schwartzman. BlackRock, under the leadership of Harry Fink, went public in 1999 at $14 a share on the New York Stock Exchange. Fink's exceptional idea fetched BlackRock $165 billion in assets by the end of 1999. A few years later, BlackRock kick-started a major acquisition by buying State Street Research and Management holding company SSRM Holdings, Inc. BlackRock moved an inch further to acquire the funds of funds business of Quello's Capital Management in 2007. BlackRock kept increasing its assets and reputation that by 2008, when the United States experienced a financial meltdown, the United States contracted Fink and his team to help the country resolve the problem. The Federal Reserve allowed BlackRock to superintend the $130 billion debt settlement of Bear Stearns and American International Group. After the 2008 financial meltdown, BlackRock became the first asset manager in the world by 2009 before acquiring a three capital management LLC. Also, in 2009, Barclays sold its global investor unit to BlackRock for $13.5 billion. BlackRock continued to grow through the years, and by 2013, Fortune listed the company on its annual list of the world's 50 most admired companies. In 2014, the Economist said that BlackRock's $4 trillion under management made it the world's biggest asset manager. It was larger than the world's largest bank, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, with $3 trillion. BlackRock's dominance in the industry soon declined in 2018, when the company's assets dropped by $468 billion and fell below $6 trillion, which was BlackRock's largest decline since 2011. We are halfway through guys, and there are more details to come, so stick around. If you are enjoying the video, 
kindly hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. BlackRock's decline didn't hold the company back as it moved to acquire 4.81% shares in Deutsche Bank in 2019, making it the single largest shareholder. Like Deutsche, BlackRock boasts shares in other major companies worldwide. Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet Inc., Procter & Gamble Co., Pfizer, Tesla, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, and Disney Walt Co., amongst others. So, when anyone says that BlackRock owns the world, it's not a joke, as they indirectly control everything in the world. But behind the success of BlackRock lies a lot of criticisms, from the environmental impact of its holdings to going against the United States policy by investing in blocklisted Chinese entities. According to various reliable sources, BlackRock is the largest investor in coal worldwide. The incorporation also has the highest density of coal holdings of the world's 10 largest investors. Similarly, BlackRock owns around 2.1 tons of thermal coal reserves. For clarification's sake, thermal coal contributes a lot to climate change. Upon burning, coal produces some gaseous byproducts like carbon dioxide, methane gas, nitrogen oxide, and sulfur dioxide, all contributing to climate change. It is common knowledge that we humans breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. In contrast, plants help us absorb the carbon dioxide we breathe out and use it to manufacture their food using photosynthesis, which releases oxygen as a byproduct. This process helps to create a balance between humans and plants so neither of us can go into extinction. But it seems BlackRock Inc. has an ulterior motive. BlackRock, being a shareholder in most top companies, is also enabling deforestation. The implication of this is that human lives are at risk, deforestation reduces the number of plants in the world, and that makes it difficult for humans to inhale purifying oxygen. Deforestation puts an imbalance in the ecosystem's food chain since plants are the primary producers of all the food we consume. As if enabling deforestation is not enough, BlackRock's involvement in the 2008 economic crisis should not be left unsaid. The 2008 financial crisis was primarily caused by deregulation in the financial industry. Housing prices started falling in 2007, and this trapped homeowners who couldn't afford the payment nor could they sell their houses. When the value of derivatives crumbled, banks stopped lending each other funds. This created the financial crisis that led to the Great Recession, which bottomed out in 2009 but literally took the United States and countries worldwide until 2017 to reach full employment level. In March 2008, Larry Fink was told that Wall Street needed his help to defuse a crisis threatening the American financial system. While Fink was known as Mr. Fixit of Wall Street, back at BlackRock, it is business as usual, lots and lots of business. A few months after the call, BlackRock agreed to manage subprime assets with a value of $22 billion from Union Bank of Switzerland. All these and other help BlackRock rendered during the financial crisis made Larry Fink and his shareholders richer at a time when much of Wall Street was getting poor. While the shares of larger and wealthier financial companies declined, that of BlackRock soared close to 43%. It might look like Fink was only doing business, but deep down, it's not business as usual. All banking systems suffered during the crisis. And it was BlackRock's Larry Fink that helped popularize the same mortgage-backed securities that plummeted the banking system. The same BlackRock's Larry Fink made a jaw-dropping amount of money cleaning up the mess. Moving on, BlackRock's criticism also extends to moving against the policies of the United States. When Joe Biden was elected as president, he made Larry Fink and other BlackRock alum a part of his administration. And under the United States of America law, the government maintains an entity list of Chinese companies barred from the US commercial or trade relations due to foreign policy concerns or national security. A perfect example was when the United States blocklisted 28 Chinese entities over abuses of the Iowa population in Xinjiang. Part of these Chinese entities are iFlyTech and Hikvision. iFlyTech is a voice recognition and artificial intelligence company. While Hikvision presents itself as the world's biggest manufacturer of surveillance technology. According to SEC filings, BlackRock has an investment worth over $15 million with Hikvision and an amount much smaller with iFlyTech. BlackRock might not be as popular as other foreigners in the world, but controlling assets worth more than twice the annual output of the United Kingdom economy speaks volumes. BlackRock is an irredeemable force in the industry. Let us know what you think of BlackRock in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We will see you in the next video.